Yep. Yay! I'm finally done with my first chapter! Bash, bash, bash. Omedeto! <laughs> now, thank you guys for having a big patience with me this year. The first chapter of Twins is now out on Pixip. You can read it for free, obviously. This chapter has been such an adventure for me. I thought a lot about, okay, what am I going to do to announce the first, you know, chapter of Twins? This is a big thing for me, like this is a milestone in my life as <laughs> as weird as it may sound but twins is very important to me so having officially done the first chapter is like wow i i am slowly realizing that i am realizing the story i am finally making it into something real like something that i can share with people and that's it's just an amazing <laughs> it's just an amazing feeling so we're going to go through each page here and very briefly so I don't want to hinder you too much. We start out with our beautiful cover page where you, you can see Kira-chan, Kari-chan and under her you can see Makamaka already, his little feet over here. And then we move up to page 1. So in the first chapter we start off in the library with Kira and she is reading it interesting book about a certain type of dragon and just looking at the details on that page you may already get some hints at what is going to happen later on or what exactly she is reading about and then we follow her in between her leaving the library we also see a boy running away which is odd like who is that we don't know and then when she's outside she's talking to one of the guards that comes up to her you don't know what they are talking about he says liar as he sees Kira but we have no idea as a reader what this is about yet and you have this beautiful panel where you see the character introduction of Kira and I think she looks very very lovely and I'm very proud of her first appearance. Something interesting to point out in the page where they are talking you see a close-up of their weapon. The reason why their spares are not solid why they have like a lot of curves in there and this beautiful stone in the middle is because with the help of this stone we have to focus a certain energy that you will learn more about as the story progresses the gods are able to partially control the movement of water and their attacks are supposed to be like very sharp shooting water through the edges of a spear like being bended and you can see some clouds forming around the spear. As a reader at this point you don't know what this means but it implies that he's so angry that instinctively his emotions led him to concentrate force in the stone and he might have actually thought about attacking Kira. Then he goes away and we see that Kira is devastated not knowing what's going on here like this came out of nowhere for her and then she calls out very wistfully the name of her little sister and we see the first shots of her little sister how she's smiling like dancing around winking like a lot of vibrant movement and this is something that I take a lot of caution in the way I introduce characters. I want them to mean something. So there is meaning in the way Kira is introduced, there's meaning in the way Kari is introduced, and there's meaning in the way Ik is introduced. So with Kari you can see very vibrant, very cheerful and overall a very fun person to have around and next to her is a chaotic body makamaka which i hope you guys love like even if you don't like this manga and the first chapter i still hope that you love makamaka's design because i have not changed it from how it looked as a child he is the only character in twins that i have not adjusted from the original manga that i drew as a seven year old 10 year old child so i really hope you like him because i've always loved his design and i've always even as a child hoped that maybe someday i would be able to bring out plushies of makamaka or even like you know cute little plushy bags and stuff like that like a lot of goods with makamaka he has always been in my mind like i i, I always loved his design it's just so comforting i thought and yeah the two of them are a chaotic duo and, and they are definitely the comedic relief of this manga i would say well, maybe 
not really for everyone as you will see. So Makamaka already shows himself to be quite useful using his Makamaka super attack. And then we move on to the next pages. So then Kira comes up to Kari and this goes without saying but I would also love it if you guys sometimes zoomed into the pictures. There's a lot of manually done hatching and a lot of thought put into hatching. You can see it in the introduction page of Angry Kira that the clouds are done with very fine hatching, very short strokes compared to a tail or parts of her hair and that's done purposefully because I think short fine lines make the acid clouds but you know like steam underwater like movement underwater it just makes it look more fluffy i thought so yeah there are definitely a lot of pages where if you zoom in i don't think you would be disappointed with the quality of the page the both of them are scared for their life which they have all right to be <laughs> to be honest i would want to stand in front of that and then we end on the last page that was uploaded on pixiv which is where both of them run away and shavrik I, I pronounce his name so english shavrik would be his correct pronunciation. It's hard to do while you're speaking English. He notices that his back is missing and you can now get a hint of okay there are some shenanigans going on. <laughs> so the first new page. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Here is a little picture on how this page looked before. Ooh. Ooh, get off the stage. I struggled a lot with this page. The upper panel I got done with a lot of time, but I was happy with. But stuff like the upper perspective, I later on decided to give the buildings in the further back only a hatching line rather than a straight line art because I thought it would make it look like it's further back and I think I did achieve that um, effect. So stuff like that I am very happy with even though they are very small details and not really valorant for the read I think. It's good if you don't notice because it means it feels natural. <laughs> So they run out of the kingdom and finally Kari has enough. <laughs> And I want to point out, I am a bit of a maniac because I decided to give Kari a very, very effortful outfit, like very detailed outfit. And sometimes it was hard to keep it correct all over pages. So I had to rework, like go back and look at, okay, is everything fitting? Are we bracelets on the same side, you know, stuff like that. I tried to get as accurate as possible, also with the colors. So I hope you guys appreciate that because I did not want to cut back on how I think a princess of her status would look like. Just because I want to be lazy while trying, you know, that would make no sense for the story. So yeah, you have a very cute frontal picture, front picture of Kari. And finally revealing what's going on here. And she's completely right. Kira was dumped once again. <laughs> Poor thing, can't catch a break. And she's asking her what happened. And here you can see Makamaka using one of his other moves, which is Makamaka Max, where he can poof into a bigger form of himself. Kira finally revealing that regard that she was talking to Clem she was cheating on him and obviously that's not true. Kari says so herself that can't be true but Kira already can tell that perhaps this was once again a case of us being mistaken and Kari gets flustered and admits so and then it starts all over again with her argument and Makamaka is like I'm going out and I, I, I don't know I really love this panel with him trying to get out of there. <laughs> so what I want to say about these two pages is before they were one page for a long time once I finish a page I go back and look at all of the other pages which again it's not very efficient but I wanted there to be consistency in the quality so it was one page I turned it into two and I think it got a lot more easier to read then we move on and you kind of have this more, I would say, delicate drawn Kira and obviously choices like this with using very fine and delicate lines, her face looking like very porcelain, very delicate are on purpose as well. I hope it conveys a certain melancholy so that the reader can tell just like Kari something is off. Obviously they are talking about one thing but her mind is somewhere completely else right now. And here she has this very beautiful innocent smile and I love how her smile turned out here. I just have to say I <laughs> like small things like this make me very happy and very proud when I 
am able to draw the expression just right, that's the way I imagined it. And this is the case with her innocent smile here, asking Kira to please not tell anyone that she wants to go to a surface. And the next page here is actually one of my favorites. I have no complaints with this page, I think all the expressions are just right, it's easy to read, I love how easy on the eye it is, like I think it's, it's just very nice way it is i wouldn't change a thing and here you have kari recommending that they might go together it would be fun right she could guide her since um Shavrik has told her a lot about the surface he would be the perfect guide why not go together like again being this very uplifting and very positive character and kira here seems very reluctant like there's again something else on her mind and she just ends the conversation with the words I'll be fine. From here on we now go over to Ictus pages which are a lot more action loaded <laughs> as you can tell. I love the movement from the boots I have to be honest I really really love how it ended up looking. Again a lot of details hidden in these pages that might not stick out to you at first but they all contribute to them looking I think a lot better than without all the hatching and without the effort and time put into them. So I'm very happy how this turned out. Stuff like the armor of the soldier as well. I was very conscious and choosing an armor that's not too glamorous since these are foot soldiers. It's a very simple look and yeah, the flag that you can see behind the cloth here. I actually completely drew out and yeah, the single symbols on the flag already give you a hint at the type of kingdom it is. So stuff like that are things that I want your readers to be able to keep hunting for these little hints within the story. So you might be like looking at this flag and being like, aha, uh -huh, okay, their flag might look like this. And later on you will maybe see the symbol again at some places where you don't expect them. So I want there to be this continuity for like very attentive readers to be able to be like, well, I knew it from the beginning, I saw it in page one, right? I myself as a manga reader really enjoy that sort of stuff where you can read something and you're like, oh, I already know where this story is going and then it goes there and it's just very fulfilling, I think, like very rewarding as a reader. So that's also something that I try to put in here. This page I also reworked quite a bit. So here again is how it looked before. And now we're back to how it looks now. So the feeling I wanted to portray here with Ecto is that he is running away from a very dreadful and chaotic situation from a very dark place into something towards something that should represent hope so towards the light and before there was no real contrast from forwards to the light so I wanted to create that contrast a little bit more and reworks like this took me several days due to the hatching that you can see if you zoom into the pages but I think they make it worth it I wouldn't change again I wouldn't change the effort and time that I put into this because I think it just makes so much more of a difference and it's worth it for the better quality of the pages and here I also have to thank the one comment I don't know if they are still watching here or if they just landed on this channel through a short and then just faded into the oblivion of internet but if you are listening thank you for your help in deciding on whether i want to use thicker lines or thinner lines i actually do struggle with that it's not just a joke i am very um, self-doubting so i'm never sure like which looks better both look good but when i decide on something i i need like real assurance that it's good enough so that was actually very very helpful um, from you and yeah here's a cookie no 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 not a cookie you get a hug from a there you go so the first time we see Ictus' face, which, I, which again is very much on purpose, is him looking quite pitiful. Looking quite pathetic, you, you could say in a very mean way, right? Because he's sweating, he is crying, his eyes are like burst open because he's in such shock and panic. It's not the image of a strong character by no means. 
and I think that's very important at the introduction time. So the next page you can see what he is looking down at because we had this contrast of him running away from chaos, darkness into the light into hope and his hope brought him to another chaotic state to this chaotic view of the wild ocean. This page again I edited quite a lot before there were no waves in here and I thought it looked too still. What I wanted to show was the utter fearful nature that the waves have and him running away from one dreadful situation to facing another that he thought would be like hope, would be light, would save him. That's kind of what I wanted to show here and I hope other people who also are afraid of heights like myself will kind of feel anxious looking at this page. <laughs> but not in a mean way, just that it will have that effect so that you can feel like egg to heal so he's looking down here. You also have onomatope hidden in the cloud. <laughs> also very happy about <laughs> how it turned out. So here you can see a little bit more of his stones and the waves crashing against them. Him being out of breath, his legs shaking and finally giving out under him. And he falls back onto the grass, clinging to the grass for a second, afraid to fall. And then the strength just leaves his body and he lets go of the grass and we can finally see his full body introduction, character introduction shot. Unlike other characters like Kira and Kari, his appearance is very simple and it fits with where he is coming from. Not the invasion but the actual village that he's coming from. So it's not very in, I would say, in your face kind of character design it's very like humble and yeah you have to see where it goes from there right where the character develops from there so you have him here at the edge of the cliff just completely out of breath shocked and paralyzed not knowing what to do and if you look in the back here's something else that I have realized in this point is that when you draw something further back it's better to give less detail even though when you zoom in it might look kind of funny but no one's going to zoom in like this this is only me zooming in because it's digital but normal people would not zoom in at the crown of the trees and analyze each tree so you have to look at the picture overall rather than zooming in too much that's a mistake that I still do quite a bit but here it's something that I consciously try to avoid and give more detail for things that, I'm, that are in the front and less detail for things that are in the back. Also my signature round Marui boots. <laughs> People who have seen a lot of my former illustrations know that I love to draw like very round clownish shoes. I don't know why, I just find them so appealing. Okay, so then you have him still in shock and you have the birds tripping up there, the waves kind of slowing down, his hands still hovering over the grass and then you see an owl and the moon. And I can maybe say this as a little tip for you guys if you're drawing a manga, what really helps me with drawing the different panels, like separating different panels, is closing my eyes and imagining I'm actually watching an anime or a movie and then thinking about okay how would that look and that's how I get a lot of these ideas for more dynamic poses, for more dynamic shots, in this case the idea of first seeing birds that would be active in the daytime and then you see a bird that's active at nighttime and already even if I had not shown you the moon you would know okay it's night now time has passed and I think creative transitions like that are very very nice and interesting you know so the reader does not get bored you always have something new to convey basic things to them so it has finally become night and Ikto finally has calmed down a little bit from his first shock and decided to stand up and walk back towards the cliff and within his eyes you can already see they are quite um, distant it seems that he maybe has calmed down physically but he has not snapped out of the shock that he was in after running away from his village being invaded so you have him looking straight ahead getting closer and closer to that cliff until suddenly you have Kira popping up and he is 
he does not realize what he is looking at at first only as she's talking a second time like completely stunned at seeing something non-human in the water shouting up towards him right and kira knows the common tongue that's something that i will already give away because <laughs> Honestly, just because I want to talk to you guys about my manga and these are things that I can discuss without spoiling too much. But yeah, Kira does speak the common tongue, but in this panel I thought already this page, since she is trying to get to the surface, she did not plan on meeting this boy. And as she tried to approach the surface, she saw this boy standing on the cliff looking down at the ocean and her first thought was, stop, he is going to fall. So instinctively she would not use common but her own tongue so that's why she's speaking in her own language at first and you have a translation and the pronunciation of those symbols with the official IPL alphabet written out so you know what it would sound like so she's trying to prevent what she is assumes to be an accident here having a very sincere look of fear for this person that she does not know yet and then you have this ominous page, the text, a word spoken, a new thread offered, spun, only to come loose once again, and along with it, so shall fate. And these words are not spoken by a narrator, but actually by another character that is connected to the little item that you see at the bottom of the picture. And we move on to the last page, finally, and here you can see what the other unknown character meant with a word spoken as both Ekche, who is running away from the invasion of his village completely hopeless desperate in panic and shock looks upon this mystical creature in the ocean that suddenly popped out out of nowhere and as Kira who ran away from her kingdom we don't know why yet but she also seemed to have deeper reasons for going away from there as she comes up to a surface and randomly comes upon this boy who actually seemed to be needing her help still something inside her calls out to him both reach out their arms and they cry out for help and those are the first words in common that those two consciously exchange with each other. It's already a big hint at the way the story is going to unfold from here on. This page is very very important for the rest of Twins and that's why I put a lot of effort into it. I think you can tell that even a lot more effort and time went into this page than any other page because I want the reader even 30 chapters later to come back to this page and be like this is where it all began. This is where fate kind of snapped together. And the beautiful thing about twins is, even in the beginning, you could already see as we were watching Kira leave the library, you could see Ekto running away from his village already. So you have these two stories going on parallel to each other. And that's something that will not change throughout twins. There are different stories going on at the same time. The things, the characters, choose to focus on do affect the other storylines as well and that's something that will decide certain events to happen in the future so yeah you have two dire situations going on and these two characters asking for help from each other from this person that i don't know and usually in shonen manga and shoujo manga you always have like the female companion character or the male companion character with one of them having mystical powers and helping out each other like helping out the other person to grow as a person like grow into themselves and develop their own powers as well right and with twins i really wanted it to be like a shoujo shonen manga like a mixture of both because I enjoy both manga genres and I wanted it to be very much enjoyable for people who are only interested in adventure. I also want there to be comedic moments in here so I really want this to be a dynamic story that will be the perfect escapism or what I deem to be the perfect escapism and that readers will enjoy coming onto this ride because there's so much to explore each character has their own story going on their own goals and it's not just about um, something frivolous like romance or something like that that's something that maybe i can already tell you that this is not a romantic story this is really about yeah about two 
I would say two main characters, both of them supporting each other in their best way with a lot of twists coming up, a lot of other characters showing up and I know this is like very generic, it does not tell you anything so I better shut up but yeah I, I just hope that as I keep on working on Twins that I will be able to discuss so much more with you. I've already pointed out that I've written out the whole like world law, how we work of Kira, Kari and Iktu was created. I already know that. I know what you could deem to be gods or rather entities like out of the realm. I know what they are supposed to look like. I know where they exist, like in what realm. And yeah, I am really, really, really looking forward to going like more nerdy there going more into detail there and seeing people's reaction but for now this is the final page of the first chapter and i wholeheartedly hope that you've enjoyed it after working for so long on this first chapter like my mentality is no one owes you a compliment no matter how much time or effort you put into something you are not owed a well done or it does not um, equate to the quality of your product so i would love just getting very honest opinion by people without um, fearing to critique me too much if you have a certain critique please tell me that's the way i will improve and i do really 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 appreciate any feedback that i get so yeah it was a lot of excitement and with that comment also as for what's coming next i will keep drawing the chapters but i'll and maybe if you don't want to get parasocial with me you can just skip this part going a little bit real life talk right now i am working full time like from six to seven including the commuting time so there is very little time for me to work on the um, weekdays on the manga or on any illustrations for that matter i try to like with twins i did try to work sometimes not good for your health hours where i kept drawing up until the early morning even though i had work on that day which wasn't very healthy yeah that just means that i can mainly draw on the weekends and i don't know how the pace is going to be of twins it really all depends on the feedback that i get and if i I think that um, it's worth like putting all of my focus into this like it would be worth doing that like I said I want to be able to switch over to doing illustrations full time so that's something that I would like to also focus more on from now on so I'll just have to see how I'm going to juggle that but I can confirm or reassure you that I'll still be drawing twins and giving you updates here on this channel and letting you know what's going on there and yeah as for this channel as well I'm still going to do a little videos from now and then it's just not going to be at a high frequency due to me honestly just being limited in the time that i have so that's why i sadly cannot give you a very specific timeline on when what is going to come out but still i hope this can like twins can just stay in the back of your mind and i think doing it in that casual way is the best right now until i am able to fully focus only on to draw it yeah. <laughs> that's kind of the way things are there it's very ironic and funny that twins was my escapism as a child and now redrawing twins so to speak like drawing it again as an adult it just has given me even more gratitude for this passion project kind of faster my resolve in wanting this to be escapism for other people as well for this story to be able to be somewhere that you can escape to from your everyday life because everyday life does suck i hope if you're going through something very difficult right now that you'll make it through and that you don't push yourself too much you don't have to be happy every day it's fine to be down on some Days, but that you will still be able to find something even if it's just a small thing to give you joy and also the other beginner artists like my fellow beginner artists if you're stuck at a project if you have passion for it keep going it might not be worth something to other people but if it's worth the world to you then who cares right you keep working at a project if it gives you joy i don't think there's anything wrong with dreaming a little bit about sharing it with the world right so yeah <laughs> kind of a very mm, <laughs> very uh, disgustingly sweet note to the end of this video but you're getting the sincere me today yeah.
So thank you very much for listening up to this point. Check out tweets on Pixiv and if I upload it anywhere else, I will also link that in the description box. Oh, and maybe I can say this, what I want to do definitely do in the near future is create little stickers, line stickers of the twins characters. Obviously mainly Makamaka. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so that's probably the next announcement that you will be hearing. So with that said, thank you very much for listening. Hope you enjoyed the chapter and until next time. See you. Bye bye.